I'm in a puma. Rawr. I I genuinely don't know where that came from. Ah, what a lovely evening. Hello guys, welcome back to the Car Obsession and welcome to another instalment of Ask Aaron, the segment in which I answer any questions you may have about any car I'm testing. The light is fading, I am filming this uh, kind of last minute, so hopefully we've got enough light to get by. Right, I've got your questions down here. Okie dokie, right. Let's go for a spin. Sport mode, obviously. YouTube user Dominator7002 asks, honestly, is it worthy of the ST badge or is it a name grab to sell more? Good question. I must admit, there was a small cynical part of me that thought this car may be a bit of a gimmick, just an excuse to slap an ST badge on something. But you know what? I think this is deserving of the ST badge. It is a very good car. I think the Ford Performance team have done very well. So do I think this is a, a bid to get extra sales? Well, of course, like any company, Ford is out to make money. That's a given, really. But do I think this is just, do I think this car has been built to make up the numbers? No, I do not. It is a very good car in its own right. And yeah, I do not think this car is a gimmick. Uh, thank you for your question. Instagram user it's wheels underscore X asks worth the money over the Fiesta ST Well, that is a tricky one. I suppose it depends on what you want or need from a car For example, I have a small family Therefore if I were looking at a Fiesta ST, which I'd love to own by the way, I'd have to Disregard it because it is too it is too small a car that's where the Puma ST really comes into its own because you have all of the best bits from a Fiesta ST but more space and practicality. So in that respect, I would say yes it is. Now just to give you some comparisons, if you were to compare the Puma ST to a like for like ST3 with the relevant options ticked to match this specification and five doors because this has got five doors so I think that uh, makes it fairer. The Puma ST is around £3,600 more. And for the sake of a bigger boot and a bit more space in the rear, you may argue that is too much. Now, to add to that argument, if you were to compare this to a base model, ST2, without any options, the Puma works out at about £6,500 more. And don't get me wrong, that is a lot of money. There's no disputing that. But like I say, if you do need that extra practicality, but you want to have a car like the Fiesta ST, then I think it would be worth the money. And that leads me rather nicely onto the next question. YouTube user Shazad Ayup, I do hope I've pronounced that correctly, asks, would you buy one yourself? If I had the money, yes, I genuinely would, because I love the Fiesta ST, but as I've said, or may have said, I've got a small family now, therefore the Fiesta would simply be too small. The Puma on the other hand, this would be a better a better car to live with day to day. So yes, I would buy one of these. And I think that's really the biggest endorsement I can give this car. YouTube user Ronin Essie, again I do hope I've pronounced that correctly, asks, how heavy a trailer can the Puma ST tow? I must admit that wasn't the kind of question I was expecting, but I will answer it nonetheless. So the ST can tow up to 750 kilograms if the trail is braked. If it is unbraked, then it can tow up to 640 kilograms. I hope that helps. Instagram, in, Instagram user smooth underscore criminal asks, is it better looking in the metal? Well, that's quite a subjective question, I, I suppose. When I first saw the press, uh, when I first saw the press launch photos of this car, I thought it looked fantastic because the photos they used was using this optional mean green paintwork. 
So as soon as I saw it, I thought, wow, that looks like the dog Studars. And when I saw it in the metal, I thought it looked just as good as it did in the photos. So I would say it looks as good in, in the metal as it does in the photos. But I suppose, again, that is subjective. If you think the photos look awful, then you may find it looks awful in real life. Hopefully that, that, that answers your question. YouTube user Joe80s asks, having owned a couple of Fiesta STs, just want to know how it compares ride comfort and handling. Uh, another good question. The ride, as you would expect, is firm, although it is a bit more supple compared to the Fiesta, because the whole idea of the Puma, with it being, uh, as well as being more practical and family friendly, it should be easier to live with in regard to refinement and comfort. So yeah, I'm doing 28 miles per hour now, and this road is relatively good, and I've got to no concerns. There is a firm edge to the ride, but I don't feel like I'm being jiggled here, there, and everywhere. What I will say is the low speed ride can can be, I was going to say a bit harsh, but that comment itself would be harsh. I would say the low speed ride, the low speed ride is definitely jiggly, and it may not be to uh, to everyone's tastes. But once you build up a bit of speed, it's okay. So it is firm, but I'd say the damping does a decent job, as do these wonderful Recaro sports seats that are fitted as standard. They are wonderful, arguably one of the highlight features of the Puma ST. Apologies if you're struggling to see me now, but let's face it, that's prob probably a good thing. In regard to the handling, yes, it's not quite as poised or as balanced as the Fiesta, but sorry that's the autonomous emergency braking it thought i was going to crash into that parked car silly system um well silly system in that respect obviously it's a good system because uh, it will prevent you from having a crash of course um yes anyway the handling yeah this does have a little bit of roll but it would do it's a, a crossover slash small suv but it still puts in a, a really good effort in regard to the handling Let's just turn this around because this, this is a dead end. Make sure I don't run that cat over. Yes, run away, kitten. I'm in a puma. Rawr. I, I genuinely don't know where that came from. I think the sun's got to me today. Um, <laughs> uh, next question. I've got another question from Ronin and this time it is a bit of a long one, so you'll need to bear with me. Okay, here goes nothing. How much of building this car cost cutting politics affects the build quality? Ford forums slash Facebook owners groups mention that there is a difference of interior materials. The Puma feels and looks cheaper. Also, the paint on the bottom of the doors is peeling off. I'm not sure about them critical points. I'm just wondering if you can spot any of these issues. A bit difficult to say because I've only had this car a week. This has been given to me by Ford UK. Uh, the build quality on the whole seems absolutely fine there is one area that i'm not very happy with though and that is the center armrest it's got a lot of flex to it and you can move it quite easily and yeah for a car that's around 30 grand that side of things is disappointing in regard to the paint peeling off well let's have a look No, nope, all good. Although there is a bit of uh, stone chipping to the front end on the bonnet, but this car has done a few miles, so that's to be expected. Right, on to the next question. Instagram user JamiePorth66 asks, is the ride sporty or soft? Aha, I'm afraid Joe has beaten you there. Um, the ride is sporty, but I wouldn't call it particularly uncomfortable. But yes, if you want something that's a bit more... Actually, I was, I was gonna say supple, but I'd say for the most part, this should be supple enough. So yeah, it is sporty, but not bone-breaking. YouTube user TS says, go fast. And that's more of a request than a question, but I'm not one to disappoint, so... <sighs> Woohoo! Is that good enough for you? 
Good. I hope you're happy. And the last question is from Instagram user Darren J. Parry. Any other colours available? Uh, yes, there are seven colours available in total, including this exclusive optional mean green paintwork. So you've got, I have to do this for memory, frozen white, agate black, magnetic, uh, fantastic red, grey matter, mean green, and desert island blue. There we go. That's all seven, isn't it? And there we have it, guys. The light is quickly fading, so it is time for me to wrap up. I do hope you have enjoyed this video. If so, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. By the way, don't forget to check out my merch as well. Head over to controllandshift.com, link in the video description below. If you are subscribed, don't forget to click the bell icon so you get notified every time I make a video. But until the next time, guys, be sure to keep up the car obsession. Oh, national speed limit. Tally ho! Woohoo!